For our next part of the review, we're looking at distance and midpoint. This says find the other endpoint of the line segment with the given endpoint and midpoint. So this is one of those questions where we're given the midpoint and we have to find the other endpoint. So remember the midpoint formula. Midpoint is just an average of the x values and then an average of the y values. So y1 plus y2 over 2. So we're going to plug in what we know, and we know a midpoint. So we're going to start with our midpoint for negative 10 is equal to x plus x2, which is just minus 1 instead of x plus negative 1 over 2. y, instead of plus negative 3, I'm going to do minus 3 over 2. So we've plugged in what we know, and then this remaining x and remaining y represent the endpoint that we're looking for. So remember, our midpoint is 4, negative 10. So we want x minus 1 divided by 2 to be 4, and y minus 3 divided by 2 to equal negative 10. So I like to write this out. Some people like to think in their heads, well, what number minus 1 divided by 2 would give me 4? If you want to think about it in your head, that's totally fine. If you want to write it out with me, that's cool too. So x minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to 4. I multiply both sides by 2 using inverse operations. x minus 1 is equal to 8. Then I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and I get 9 equals x, or x equals 9. Let's just plug it in and make sure this makes sense. 9 minus 1, 8 divided by 2, would give me 4. Good. Now let's try our y value y minus 3 over 2 is equal to negative 10. Multiply both sides by 2 so that those cancel. y minus 3 is equal to negative 20. We're going to add 3, add 3, and y is equal to negative 17. Again, let's plug it in. Negative 17 minus 3 would be negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. So our final answer comes from x and y, remember that's how we write an ordered pair, so we would write it as 9, negative 17. That would be your final answer, 9, negative 17. All right, let's move on to another one. Find the midpoint of each line segment. So this gives us a line segment, and we're going to find the midpoint using it. So remember your midpoint formula, average of x's, average of y's. So in this case they gave us a picture. Um, so you could do a couple things. You could try to just like ballpark it, but um, I would much rather use this formula to make sure that I'm 100% certain. So let's figure out what this ordered pair is. Well this point right here is 1, 1, 5, and this point right here is 4, 0. Let's plug in what we know. So our midpoint is equal to the average of the x's, so 1 plus 4 over 2, and then the average of the y's, 5 plus 0 over 2. Midpoint equals two point five and two point five. And let's draw it on our graph, 2.5, so that would be halfway between 2 and 3. 2.5 is here. So even though it's not um, an integer, that's okay. It could be a decimal, it could be a fraction, but that's our midpoint. Find the distance between each pair of points. Round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. So make sure you're paying attention to rounding. So distance formula. Remember, you got to have this memorized. Distance is the change in x, so x2 minus x1 squared, plus the change in y, y2 minus y1 squared. And all of that is square rooted. I like to label x1, y1, x2, y2. And then we're just going to plug it in. I've got something squared plus something squared. 
and we have x2, 0, minus x1, which is 4. Then we have y2, 2, minus y1, 4. Let's simplify. So we have 0 minus 4, negative 4 squared, plus 2 minus 4 is negative 2 squared. Negative 4 squared is a positive 16. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. So we're really looking at the square root of 20. But they want us to write our answer rounded to the nearest tenth. I don't have the square root of 20 memorized, so I'm going to actually need to pull up my calculator. If I can find my mouse, there it is. Let's go back. All right, so we're looking at the square root of 20. So second x squared and 20. So they want the nearest tenth. That's the first decimal place. So that means we have to look at the second. That's 7. That'll round 4 up to 5 for a final answer of 4.5. Final answer of 4.5. So we would say the distance is 4.5. So that's the distance formula given to coordinate pairs, to ordered pairs. Um, we can also use the distance formula using the graph. So if you want, you can find the ordered pairs. So in this case, it was 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 5. And then this is 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we can plug in the distance formula. Another thing you could do is um, drawing a right triangle between those two points. And look at, well, what is the actual distance between the x's? The distance between the x's is 1, 2, 3. The distance between the y's is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. And we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing distance. So that just says distance is the square root of 3 squared plus 8 squared. Seventy-three, and round your answer to the nearest tenth. So that's definitely um, not a perfect square. So we're going to take the square root of seventy-three. So second x squared seventy-three. Eight point five four. If we want to the nearest tenth, look at the hundredth place. Four. Four will not round up five, so it'll just stay eight point five. So this answer will just be distance equals 8.5. And if you did the, the more traditional distance formula instead of that right triangle, that's totally fine. You should pretty much get the, the, should get the exact same answer, and even these steps right here should be very similar. All right, last question. So this is one of my favorite types of questions because I think it's pretty challenging, but it's definitely not something that we can't do. We just have to really read the information and figure out what it's saying. All right, given angle A is complementary to angle B. Complementary, I should automatically think 90 degrees, right? So whatever A is, the measure of A plus the measure of B has to equal 90. Then they say B is supplementary to C. So the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, they're supplementary, so they add to 180. Okay. If the measure of angle A is 4x plus 2 and the measure of angle B is 3x plus 4, what is the measure of angle C? Okay. So I'm going to go kind of backwards. If I want to find C, well, I know that C and B add to 180. So it would be really nice if I knew what B was. But all they've told me is that B is 3x plus 4. That's not really something I can subtract from 180. So let's go back to this first step. A and B are complementary. They add to 90. So let's go from there. We know that A is 4x plus 2. 
so 4x plus 2, and b, 3x plus 4, a and b are complementary, so they add to 90 degrees. Now we have this, we can use um, this equation to solve for x. So 4x plus 3x, let's combine those to 7x. 2 plus 4 becomes 6 equals 90. Let's subtract 6 from both sides. Divide by 7. And I'm just going to double check in my calculator because this is not one time where I want to make a mathematical error. So I'm doing 84 divided by 7. I think it's 12, but I just want to make sure. 84, divide that by 7. Awesome. Okay. So x is equal to 12. That's great, but that's not an answer. Remember, we want to find the measure of angle C, right? So how does x equal 12 help us find the measure of angle B? Well, let's go back to what it said here. B is, the measure of angle B is 3x plus 4. And we just said that x is 12. So the measure of angle B is 40. Right? So if the measure of angle B is 40, and B and C are supplementary, we just have to figure out, well, what remains? What plus 40 would give us 180? And we can hopefully see that in our head. If not, we can find the difference, do 180, subtract 40, and find that we get 140 is the measure of angle C. So that's how we could use all of those angle relationships to find that missing angle C.